Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. Been gone the past week dealing with some personal stuff, but everything's all good. I'm back now. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about what I believe to be the most compelling piece of Bigfoot evidence, other than the Patterson footage. I, I think that's pretty legit, but this one is uh, right up there with the Patterson footage for me. Uh, it's the Skookum cast. So if you haven't heard of the Skookum cast back in September of 2000, there was a BFRO expedition out in the Mount St. Helens area. And uh, you know, it's really close to like the Ape Canyon area where the Ape Canyon incident occurred, which is very interesting as well. But there was a film crew along with them from a TV show called Animal X. That show has been canceled for a long, long time. So a bunch of the researchers set out a bunch of fruit in a muddy wallow. And uh, this was just off of a forestry road. But I guess the idea was to put the fruit in this muddy area so that whatever creature came in to take it would leave tracks in the mud. Um, they returned the following morning to see if anything had taken the fruit. And sure enough, the fruit was gone. I don't think it was totally gone. I think I read that there was fruit scattered around and I think there was pieces of it with bites taken out. At least that's what I read in Jeff Meldrum's book. But uh, they had also set out these pheromone disc things that have like female primate sex pheromones on them and uh, one of those was gone as well. So anyways, in the ground, in the mud, right next to where the fruit was, was what appeared to be some sort of imprint of a creature that was kind of lying in the mud. It left an impression of the forearm, uh, the heels, the thighs, the buttocks, and the most interesting part is the heel. Because it looks like a heel and an Achilles tendon going up. And when you compare it with that of a human, it's bang on, just a heck of a lot bigger. And I guess there was also dermal ridges found on the heel that could be compared to other track casts that Jeff Meldrum had in his collection. They're extremely similar. The biggest argument against the cast is that it was just an elk resting there, but I guess later on comparisons were made at like zoos and wildlife reserves where they were looking at these areas where elk were hanging out and they could compare, you know, these elk bedding areas to this Skookum cast. It was just a lot more definitive where the elk were actually nesting as compared to where this supposed Bigfoot creature was taking the fruit. You know, it was kind of scurrying along in the mud on its side, reaching to, to grab the fruit. And, uh, you know, you could see hair impressions throughout the whole cast. Uh, Henner Fehrenbach did the hair analysis on the samples that were retrieved from the cast. It turned up quite a few animals like coyotes and elk, but I guess there was also a particular hair sample that came back as an unknown primate. Um, of course, right? That's what we always hear. The unknown hominid or unknown primate. I think it's really cool that with this piece of evidence, you have all the big names, like all the scientists looking at it, and they're convinced that it's a Sasquatch, and it's definitely not an elk, or definitely not a bear, or any other creature. You know, you had Jeff Meldrum, you had Henner Fehrenbach, you had John Green, um, Grover Krantz, John Bindernagel. All these big name guys studying this and they all agree that it is most likely a Sasquatch and not any other kind of animal. It just didn't match up to be anything else. It was most likely some sort of hominid and you know they say that the size of it would be 50% larger than that of a six foot tall man which is crazy. So the proportions are correct. Anatomically, it matches up with a primate and something that's larger than a human. It's also said that there was evidence of 17 inch tracks found in the area. Now, from what I understand, the ground around the muddy area was quite firm and nothing was really leaving impressions there. You would have to have hooves or a really hard foot to leave any kind of impression. So a, a big flat padded foot wouldn't really leave any tracks. So they think the creature walked up to the muddy spot and lied down 
so it wouldn't leave any tracks and kind of scurried along to the fruit and was reaching and grabbing it because you know the Sasquatch apparently is so elusive uh, there's a good chance that it is aware of itself leaving tracks behind and there's evidence of other primates like chimpanzees uh, being aware that they leave tracks as well. I feel like I can put my faith in the opinions of Jeff Meldrum and the late John Bindernagel, Grover Krantz and you know all those big researchers. As a scientist you do everything you can to try and prove your theory wrong and you know once you get to a point where you can't do that then you're on to something. I think it's a very solid piece of evidence, especially with the heel imprint with the Achilles tendon. That's so distinct and just matches perfectly with the humans that uh, I, I can't really see it being anything else, you know? And the dermal ridges, that's a primate characteristic. It's not an elk characteristic or a bear characteristic or any other living creature. It's, it's primate. Out there, there's some sort of primate that's 50% larger than a man and uh, has dermal ridges and is intelligent enough to hide its tracks. And you know, coincidentally, in the same area where the Ape Canyon incident occurred in 1924. You know, that Mount St. Helens area has many, many sightings recorded and there's been many encounters throughout that area. Now, of course, the fact that they were filming a TV show on this expedition stirred up some questions as to the, you know, authenticity of the Skookum cast. There was potential that a crew member or multiple crew members could have maybe made the cast or that members from the BFRO were in on it. And you know, those questions are gonna come up naturally just because the film crew is there. There's definitely shows out there that'll fabricate evidence, especially in those like ghost hunting shows. A lot of that stuff's fabricated, I'm pretty sure, but. I can't personally believe the BFRO would be in on any kind of hoax. So if there was a hoax going on, it was unknown to them and was put on by members of the film crew. But even then, I, I don't think it's likely. There's only a few pieces of Bigfoot evidence that I feel are actually authentic and genuine and more than likely not a hoax. The Skookum cast being one of them. I've always had a feeling and believe that the Patterson footage was legitimate. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the Skookum cast. What do you guys think? Do you think it's legitimate? Do you think it was a hoax? Do you think it's an elk or some sort of misidentification? Let me know in the comments below. Sorry for being away for a week. Real life gets in the way sometimes, uh, but you know, things are warming up outside. Spring is here and I can't wait to get out in the field a lot more. I'm heading out to Brown Creek soon to set up some trail cameras, hopefully get something good. So I'm gonna leave them out there for at least a couple weeks before I check up on them and switch memory cards. But Hopefully we'll get something good, you know? I can't wait for the summer, got some good expeditions planned. Heading out to the Vancouver area in June to shoot a documentary near the town of Mission. If you guys have heard about the Mission BC Bigfoot footage, it's that area. So, you know, I think there's some good chances of finding something interesting over there. But anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.